So now that we've uh, assembled together a little bit of our Emily interview, and we've created that jump cut, that kind of unfortunate little snapping of the head position, we want to be able to cover that. And we can do that by, by positioning something with another clip called a cutaway. A cutaway just enables you to visually change to uh, seeing the footage from another clip while you continue to hear the audio from the original clip on the timeline. So for example, what we want to be able to hear are these two clips of Emily speaking, but we want to be able to cover this jump cut we've created between the two. Jump cuts not only will cover mistakes that you've made or you know, cover jump cuts like that, but they also just make the video more interesting to watch by letting the viewer look at something other than just this talking head that's on the screen. Okay, so to do that, we wanna go up and look at the clips that are available to us up in our clip browser. I can drag my finger up and down on the mouse or I can also use the little scroll bar on the side here to scroll up and down. Remember, we stretched our clips out using the, the little film strip tool up here that, uh, to change the appearance of this. If I wanna go back to seeing the clips represented just as a thumbnail, I can slide this little slider over so it says all, or I can zoom in uh, to show uh, more detail on the clips. So if I scroll up to the top of this, we have some of our cutaway shots and we have two of them. There's this one that's kind of a wider shot of Emily sitting at the table editing. And you can see there's not a lot of action there. She does a little bit of movement with her hand back and forth between the keyboard and the mouse. So that's, uh, I like to actually use, you know, parts of video where there's something like that happening rather than just sort of her sitting and staring at the screen or you know, tapping on some keys. So I think cutting on movement tends to make the video look a little more interesting. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the first part of this and using the things that we looked at in the last segment here, I'm gonna set my endpoint just as she begins to move her hand away from the mouse or just as she begins to reach back over. So let's say that I'm gonna set my endpoint just as she starts to move her hand from the mouse to the keyboard, like that. So I'm going to go backwards here and just tap the, the letter I to mark my endpoint there. And I'm going to go forward a little bit. And she puts her hand back on the mouse and starts to move it a little bit. So I'll mark that as my out point. Okay, so there we have our first clip. I'll hit F to favorite that. And then I can go down if I want and select the next clip or the next portion of that clip. Now we have some footage of her hand manipulating the mouse. Now, if I were directing this, I probably would suggest that Emily take her hand off of the mouse and I would compose the shot as you see it there and then I would have her bring her hand in, set it on the mouse, and move it around a little bit and then take it back out. That just gives me some more options so I can kind of match her moving her hand over to the mouse and then cutting to the close-up and seeing her hand come in to the frame. Since we don't have that, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a portion of this where she's doing a little bit of mousing and I'm gonna tap I on the uh, on the keyboard to set my endpoint and then go forward a few seconds and tap O. Okay, so now, and then I'll tap F to favorite that. So we now have two pieces we can use. If I go back up here, I'm just gonna click right on that little bit and then I'm gonna drag that down on my timeline. Now this time, instead of putting it on the primary storyline, we wanna position this clip above the clip that's on the primary storyline like that. So by positioning it above like this, Final Cut will basically default to showing the clip that's highest on the timeline, that's physically higher up toward the top of the timeline. So visually, whatever is above another clip will cover that clip. So in this case, if we go ahead and play through this now, I'm gonna position the playhead just before the cutaway shot, push the space bar to let it play. Jump cut, so and that's when you Emily. cut between two shots that are really similar. So you can cover that up with B-roll of relevant activities. And or then it cuts to the close-up of her for the duration of this clip. So if I put another clip above this one, for example, that clip would hide the one, this one, and also this one. So whatever clip is highest on the timeline covers those that are below it visually. For the sound though, you actually would hear the sound for all of the clips. So we would not only hear the audio of Emily speaking, but we would also hear whatever audio there is in this cutaway shot that we put there. We could adjust that by turning down the cutaway shot. We can eliminate the sound from it altogether. There's a variety of approaches that you can take, but remember, primarily, we want to hear Emily talking during this. Um, now, remember, if I'm, if I'm crowding my screen too much here, I can always go back over to my clip appearance button uh, over here on the far right-hand side of the timeline, right there. I can click on that and basically shrink down the size of these clips a little bit. 
so that I have a little bit more space to work with. Now one other important thing about these uh, cutaway shots that I put in there is I can move them anywhere that I want. I can drag them left or right to make them start earlier or start later. In this case, I wanted to straddle the, the cut between these two clips so that it's covering that rather than being over here, for example. Another thing that you'll notice if we zoom in on this cutaway a little bit is that there's kind of a little spike that, that goes straight down from this cutaway into the clip, uh, one of the clips below it. If I pull up on it a little bit, you can see that spike a little bit better. It's over there on the left edge of the clip. Um, that's because this clip is what they call in Final Cut Pro a connected clip, meaning that this clip is connected to this clip. What does that mean? Well, if I pick up this clip and move it, the cutaway shot goes with it. So those two clips are connected together. It's not connected to this clip, so I can move this one without affecting that, even though they overlap here. So the clip will always be connected to a clip that's on the primary storyline, one of the clips that are on this line. Uh, any clips that you put above or below would always be connected to clips on the primary storyline. And that's just handy because if you've created a relationship between this cutaway shot and the one below it on the timeline, you can then move them together and maintain that relationship. Okay, so now we have this cutaway shot. Again, when I play through it, you'll hear Emily speaking, but we'll see uh, the video cutaway um, up here in the browser window to our cutaway shot. Similar. So Sorry, you could start a just do a there. jump cut, and that's when you cut between two shots that are really similar. So you can cover that up with B-roll of relevant activities or photos. Okay, so we just put in one cutaway shot. I could use that second shot now and make this um, a little bit more interesting by having a little bit more detail. So we show the wider side of Emily. We allow the viewer to understand that she's, we're looking at her sitting at an editing console, but then we can add some detail by going down and finding our cutaway shot and dragging that in. So I've already favorited a portion of that. So you can see the little green bar, so I can highlight that to make our clip highlighted, and then I can drag this one down. Okay, now remember I want to put this cutaway shot also above the one on the primary storyline, and I just want to drag these two together. Notice that as I do that, if I drag it on top, it'll, it'll basically try to replace it. So I just want to butt them up tight against one another. Sometimes when you're doing that, it's helpful to have a function turned on called snapping. Snapping sort of makes these clips magnetically attracted to one another so that it's easier to get them to, um, to stick together. I can turn on snapping by going over to the right-hand side of the timeline over here, right next to the clip appearance button that we looked at earlier. This is the snapping function. If you forget that, you can just hover the mouse over it and it'll pop open a little, uh, little tag to remind you of that. So I'm gonna turn on snapping so that it's blue like that. And now when I uh, drag the clip over, this clip will stick to things like the playhead or the edges of other clips. So if I bring it to here, it'll stick to that first clip. If I drag it too far, it'll actually try to push the other clip up like that. So you wanna just get it right until they're touching like so. Okay, now as we play through these, it's gonna cut from the wider shot. Notice that we allow Emily to rest her hand on the mouse first, and then we cut to that closer shot. By doing that, we create what's called continuity, meaning that we don't want to cut from a wider shot where her hands are touching the keyboard and not touching the mouse instantly to a close-up where her hand is on the mouse because then um, there's no continuity, meaning that the action doesn't continue from the wider shot to the closer shot. If you create continuity like this, if we see her hand move over to the mouse, rest on it, and then we cut to a shot of her hand on the mouse, the audience assumes that it's actually the same action uh, if it if it were in a different spot, then they'd know that it was actually not continuous action. Okay, now I could also trim these down a little bit. I could trim this to make it a little bit shorter, move it over here a little bit like that, take this one and stick it back together and, and trim it. So if you decide you don't want the cutaway shots to be quite as long, you can always go back and trim them. So remember, I think it looks better to have her type a little bit, then move her hand to the mouse to kind of draw our eye to that, and then cut away to the mouse once we see her moving it there. Now, if she's moving the mouse in the wider shot, you might want to have her have the mouse already moving as you cut to the closer shot as well. So you might want to trim this clip a little bit at the beginning here to try to find a place where the mouse is already in motion a little bit and then stick them together. So cutaway shots are a really great tool to be able to um, do things like cover a jump cut if you've created one, but also to just make your video look more visually interesting but to remember to create a, 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 
uh, a cutaway shot. You have to remember that if you're shooting something like an interview, you want to listen to what the person is talking about and then go shoot some video that illustrates what they talked about. So, you know, after you've interviewed Emily, have her go sit in the edit room and shoot some different shots of her. A wide shot of her sitting at the keyboard, a close-up of her hand on the mouse, another close-up of her hands on the keyboards, a shot looking over her shoulder at the screen. So you have a bunch of different things that you can put together to create a nice little cutaway segment like the one you've just seen.